setting the stage for World War II. The Protocols of the Learned Elders of Zion The Protocols of the Learned Elders of Zion is a 25,000-word document, which contains 24 protocols by a member of a secret group of Jews, known as the Elders of Zion. It purported to be an outline for the control of the world by the Jews, with the help of the Masons. The document has been used to prove that the Illuminati is an exclusively Jewish plan for world domination, and has put the Jewish race in a bad light. In the course of some very intense research, I have not found any concrete evidence to prove this accusation. There is no Jewish conspiracy. Even though the Illuminati's founders were Jewish, and many influential Jews were part of the inner circle, that is no reason to indict the entire Jewish race. The Bible identifies the Jews as God's chosen people, so it is highly unlikely that, as a race, they are behind such a satanic plot. It has even been said that the people in Israel are not true Jews. One only has to look at the history of Israel, and see how they have been able to miraculously survive, to see that this is nothing but anti-Semitic rhetoric. It is not race, which is the common denominator here, it is money and greed. For the most part, the conspiracy has been dominated by the Europeans, and perpetuated by the English-speaking countries of the world. No one is quite sure about this notorious document, and how it fits into the puzzle of the one-world government conspiracy. We know that its influence was taken advantage of, by the Illuminati, however, as to the actual origin and its purpose, we may never know for sure, because portions of it are highly accurate in its revelations. It is either true, or a clever forgery. If it is true, how much of it is true? If it is a forgery, it most certainly was based upon a factual document. Whatever the case, it is included in this book because it may contain some clues about the early stages of the Illuminati conspiracy, and the people behind it. French Jesuit, the Abbe Baruel, who in 1797 wrote the five-volume memoir Pou Servir à l'Histoire du Jacobinisme, received a copy of a letter in 1806, from J. B. Simonini, an army officer in Florence. In it was a statement that the Jews promised themselves that in less than a century, they would be the masters of the world. Unquote. This letter had been widely circulated in France. It was later revealed that the letter had been fabricated by the French police to turn Napoleon against the Jews. In 1848, Hermann Gedge, a German postal official, forged letters indicating that Benedict Waldeck was conspiring to assassinate Frederick William IV, the King of Prussia. After it became known that they were forgeries, he was removed from his job, and he began writing under the pseudonym, Sir John Redcliffe. One of those novels, Biarritz, written in 1868, contained a chapter titled, In the Jewish Cemetery in Prague, in which the heads of the twelve tribes of Israel met with Satan to tell him of their plans to control the world. However, the covert proceeding was witnessed by two men, who then dedicated their lives to fighting the satanic Jewish plot. In 1872, Russian anti-Semites printed the chapter in a pamphlet, as fiction based on fact. It was reprinted in 1876 and 1880. In July, 1881, the story was published in the French paper Le Contemporain as fact, and all of the speeches by each tribal head were consolidated into a single speech, supposedly made by a chief rabbi in a secret meeting of influential Jews. To substantiate the claim, it was said to have been taken from a forthcoming book by English diplomat, Sir John Readcliffe, a takeoff on Gedge's pen name, called Annals of the Political and Historic Events of the Last Ten Years. In 1891, the story appeared in the Russian newspaper Novorossiysky Telegraph, which established that the speech was made in 1869 by a rabbi to a secret Sanhedrin, possibly referring to the First Congress of Reform Judaism, held in Leipzig. Its authenticity, again, was supported by the fictional Sir John Readcliffe. Later, in the October 21, 1920 issue of La Vielle France, the newspaper said there was a striking analogy between the protocols of the elders of Zion and the discourse of Rabbi Reichhorn, presented in Prague in 1869, over the tomb of the Grand Rabbi Simeon Ben Yehuda. Early in 1900, this fictional speech was used to instigate pogroms against the Jews, and became known as the Rabbi's Speech. An anti Semite, P. A. Crush even, used the speech to provoke a pogrom at Kishinev, in the Ukraine, in 1903 in which 45 Jews were killed, and 400 injured, in an incident that destroyed 1,300 Jewish homes and shops. The speech is now used to prove the authenticity of the Protocols. The document known as the Protocols of the Learned Elders of Zion, seems to be a conglomeration of many anti-Jewish publications during that period. In 1869, Gaujnat de Musos wrote a book that said that the world was being taken over by a group of Satan-worshipping Jews, out of which a man would emerge that the Jews would worship as their return Messiah. In 1881, Abbe Shabbati wrote a 600-page book that said Satan was using the Jews to prepare the way for the Antichrist. His second book, published in 1882, included two letters that were allegedly written in 1489 by a Jewish leader who spoke of the Jews rising up to dominate the world. Unquote. These letters have come to be known as the Letter of the Jews of Constantinople. They were actually satirical comments on the Spanish Jews. In 1893, 
Monsignor Murin, the Archbishop of Port Louis, Mauritius, said, Freemasonry is fundamentally Jewish, exclusively Jewish, passionately Jewish, from the beginning to the end, and that someday history will tell how all the revolutions of recent centuries originated in the Masonic sect under the supreme command of the Jews. He said that the Masons of the 33rd degree were the leaders of the conspiracy, and indeed the protocols are signed, by the representatives of Zion, of the 33rd degree. In World Conquest by the Jews, Osman Bey wrote, that in 1840, a meeting of eminent Jewish leaders was held in Krakow, Poland, to discuss the expansion of Judaism over the entire world. This book became the framework for the protocols. Victor E. Marsden, the Russian correspondent for the Morning Post of London, wrote in his 1934 English translation of the protocols, that in 1884, Joseph Skirst, a Jew who was a member of the Mizraim Lodge, stole the document and sold it for 2,500 francs to Justine Glinka, the daughter of a Russian general. She in turn gave the French document, and a Russian translation to General Orgevsky in St. Petersburg, who gave it to his superior, General Cherevin, who filed it. Glinka was later arrested, returned to Russia, and exiled to her estate in Oral, while Skirst was killed in Egypt. It had also been reported that Glinka had given a copy to Alexis Sukhodin, a law enforcement official in Oral, who then showed them to two friends, Stepanov, and Professor Sergei Nilas, a religious mystic. Nilas showed them to the Tsar in 1903, who believed them to be fraudulent, and ordered that all copies were to be destroyed. After Nilas was banned from the court, it is believed that he may have altered the text to be more intense than they originally were. However, as far as the mysterious references to the representatives of Sion, of the 33rd degree, he would not have any idea what this meant, and probably would not have altered this and any other in-kind references. The protocols of the learned elders of Zion first appeared, in a shortened form, in an August, 1903 edition of the Kishinev newspaper, in the Ukraine, then in 1905, in the appendix of the third edition of a book by Nihilus called The Great and the Small, which was about the coming of the Antichrist. Nihilus said that the protocols were translated from the French text of a speech made to 300 influential Jews. A prostitute allegedly stole the document from a leading Jew. A copy was received by the British Museum in London, in August, 1906, where it was translated by English journalist Victor Marsden, who published it in 1921. Marsden said that he couldn't work on the translation for more than an hour at a time, because of the evil he felt while reading it. In 1917, Nihilus revised and expanded his book, which he called, He is Near, At the Door, Here Comes the Antichrist and the Reign of the Devil on Earth. Nihilus wrote, These protocols are nothing else than a strategic plan for the conquest of the world, presented to the Council of the Elders by Theodor Herzl, at the time of the First Zionist Congress, held by the World Zionist Organization in 1897, at Basel, Switzerland. And quat. However, in his 1905 edition, he said that the protocols had been given in 1902-03. In fact, with each subsequent edition that appeared in different countries, the origin of the document was different. On August 16th, 17th, and 18th, 1921, the New York Times ran editorials by Philip Graves, a London Times correspondent, who said that the protocols had been copied from a rare 1864 French political satire called Dialogues in Hell between Machiavelli and Montesquieu, also referred to as the Dialogues of Geneva by the London Times because Geneva had been identified as a center of revolutionary activities, by lawyer Maurice Jolie, 1831-1878. It was a pamphlet containing a conversation between Montesquieu, presenting a case for liberalism, and Machiavelli, who represented autocracy, which criticized the government of Napoleon III, who was deposed in 1871. Being illegal to criticize the monarchy, he fictionalized it, making Napoleon the character of Machiavelli, to explain the emperor's underlying motives. Jolie had it printed in Belgium, then attempted to have it smuggled over the French border. It was seized by the police, who confiscated as many copies as they could, then banned the book. The police traced the book to Jolie, who was then tried on April 25, 1865, and sentenced to 15 months in prison. At the Bern trials, a witness for the prosecution tried to prove that Jolie was a Jew, and that his book was a coded version of the Jewish plan for world domination. Another writer, Victor Hugo, 1802-1885, a grand master of the Prior de Sion, 1844-1885, who in 1849 made a reference to the United States of Europe, wrote satirical poetry against Napoleon III. As it turns out, over 160 passages from the Protocols are similar to Jolie's book, which is about half the text. Some sections are almost word for word. The only major change is that it was altered from the past, to the future. Some researchers believe that either, Jolie was given the minutes to a Masonic meeting by Adolphe Cremieux, a Mason and Rosicrucian, who urged Jolie to write the book, which he did under the pseudonym of Mr. 
X, or that the minutes were from a Marxist meeting which took place in a Masonic Lodge in Geneva, and had been stored in the archives of the Misray Masonic Lodge in Paris, where Cremieux, who sat on the Supreme Council, discovered them. Who could have forged the protocols isn't known, if in fact it is a forgery. Some researchers claim it was done in Russia, in 1904, by agents of the Tsar. However, the general consensus is that it was probably done by Elie de Sion, Ilya Sion, a Russian journalist living in Paris, who was an opponent of Sergei Witt, the Russian Minister of Finance. When Witt took office in 1892, he began to modernize Russia by doubling steel, iron, and coal production, and constructing railroads. He was disliked by those who had their money tied up in agriculture. He caused inflation by abandoning the gold standard in 1898 because of an economic slump. The protocols say that such economic depressions are caused by the elders to gain control of the money, and that the gold standard has ruined every country that has adopted it. Researchers say that the economic and financial data could have been extracted from Jolie's book, and applied to Witt, in order to present him as a tool of the elders of Zion. So, Zion allegedly forged and translated the protocols, expanding them as a satire on Witt. His writings resemble the style used in the protocols, and he was known to have used another French satire on a dead statesman, by changing the names. In 1897, General Pyotr Ivanovich Rajkovsky, head of the Russian secret police in Paris, on instructions from Witt, broke into Science Villa at Territet, Switzerland, to look for additional written attacks on Witt. It is believed that Rajkovsky discovered the protocols there, and used it for a dual purpose. He could use it against the Jews, claiming it was part of a Jewish conspiracy, and he could reveal that it was written by a Jew, which Sion was, thus destroying Sion. It was kind of ironic, that the Russian translation for Sion's name, Sion, means Zion. In 1921, Count Alexandru Duchela said that Nilis revealed to him in 1909 that the protocols were fraudulent, and had been sent to him by General Rajkovsky. During the 1934 trial of two Swiss Nazis in Bern, brought by a group of Jews who accused them of distributing the protocols, the historian Vladimir Burtsev and a professor, Sergei Svatikov, testified that Rajkovsky and other Tsarist officials had a hand in the fabrication of the protocols. In 1891, Rajkovsky sent a letter to the police, and announced his intentions to oppose the Jews. This was followed up by a book that stated his views about the Jews, and how, as a result of the French Revolution, they controlled Europe. It is quite possible that he added to Sion's manuscript to produce the protocols, and then gave it to Sergei Nilas to publish in his book. Tsar Nicholas II even identified the protocols as being fraudulent. On May 14, 1935, the court of Bern ruled that the protocols were not of Jewish origin. To complicate matters even more, a book by Jacob Venedy, called Machiavelli, Montesquieu and Rousseau, which was published in Berlin, in 1850, also contained passages very similar to the protocols. Standard Oil allegedly had the protocols distributed in Russia to create a tense situation between the Tsarist Russian government, and the Jewish-owned Royal Dutch Company, who had oil distribution rights in Russia. The document was also used in the late 1800s to instigate pogroms against the Jews so they would migrate to the United States. Once they were in America, they were registered to vote Democratic, and greatly contributed to Wilson's election in 1912. During the Russian Civil War from 1918-20, Bolsheviks distributed the protocols, and in the subsequent pogroms, over 100,000 Jews were killed. During World War II, the document gave Hitler an excuse to exterminate the Jews, and there is evidence which indicates that he was financed and controlled by the Illuminati. Eventually the protocols were distributed all over the world, and it gave the anti-Semitic people of various countries an excuse to persecute the Jews. In 1920, U.S. industrialist Henry Ford supported them in a series of articles in his newspaper The Dearborn Independent and eventually in his book The International Jew, which he published in 1921. On February 17, 1921, in New York World, Ford said, The only statement I care to make about the protocols is that they fit in with what is going on. They are 16 years old, and they have fitted the world situation up to this time. They fit it now. Quat. The German translation was known as the Eternal Jew. Ford supported Hitler, who was seen as fighting against the international Jewish conspiracy. In 1927, he renounced his belief in them after his car was sideswiped, forcing it over a steep embankment. He interpreted this as an attempt on his life by elitist Jews. In 1938, Father Charles E. Colin printed them in his weekly paper Social Justice, and various other semi-religious organizations followed suit. Those researchers who believe in the authenticity of the protocols, trace them back to 1785, when the Illuminati courier was struck by lightning on the way to Paris, and their plans for world control was discovered. The Illuminati had drafted a master plan that was worded in such a way, that it diverted attention away from the Illuminati, and directed it towards the Jewish revolutionary movement in Russia. Their plan would appear to be a Jewish plot to achieve world control through political Zionism, 
when in fact it represented the future plans of the international bankers of the Illuminati. The fact that the document was anti-Semitic, would help suppress it. One inescapable fact is that the protocols do reflect some of the views of Weishaupt, and the writings of various socialists on Bolshevism, and because of that, they were not easily dismissed. Even though they were written so long ago, they have become an accurate barometer of events during this century, and seem to parallel the goals of the Illuminati, as you can see in these excerpts from the Victor Marsden translation. Out of the temporary evil we are now compelled to commit, will emerge the good of an unshakable rule, which will restore the regular course of the machinery of the national life, brought to naught by liberalism. The result justifies the means. Let us, however, in our plans, direct our attention not to what is good and moral, as to what is necessary and useful. Our power in the present tottering condition of all forms of power will be more invisible than any other, because it will remain invisible until the moment when it has gained such strength that no cunning can any longer undermine it. Before us is a plan in which is laid down strategically the line from which we cannot deviate without running the risk of seeing the labor of many centuries brought to not dot 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 and quat. Only force conquers in political affairs, especially if it be concealed in the talents essential to statesmen. This evil is the one and only means to attain the end, the good. Therefore we must not stop at bribery, deceit, and treachery, when they should serve towards the attainment of our end. In politics one must know how to seize the property of others without hesitation if by it we secure submission and sovereignty. Quat. Our international rights will then wipe out national rights, in the proper sense of right, and will rule the nations precisely as the civil law of states rules the relations of their subjects among themselves. The administrators, whom we shall choose from among the public, with strict regard to their capacities for servile obedience, will not be persons trained in the art of government, and will therefore easily become pawns in our game in the hands of men of learning and genius who will be their advisors, specialists bred and reared from early childhood to rule the affairs of the whole world. Quat. Do not suppose for a moment that those statements are empty words. Think carefully of the successes we arranged for Darwinism, Marxism, Nietzscheism. To us, at any rate, it should be plain to see what a disintegrating importance these directives have had upon the minds of the Goyim a slur against those who are not Jewish. And quat, through the press we have gained the power to influence while remaining ourselves in the shade, thanks to the press we have got the gold in our hands, notwithstanding that we have had to gather it out of the oceans of blood and tears. And quat, to this end we have stirred up every form of enterprise, we have armed all parties, we have set up authority as a target for every ambition, disorders and bankruptcy will be universal. And quat. We appear on the scene as alleged saviors of the worker from this oppression when we propose to him to enter the ranks of our fighting forces socialists, anarchists, communists to whom we will always give support. Quat. Our power is in the chronic shortness of food. Hunger creates the right of capital to rule the worker more surely than it was given to the aristocracy by the legal authority of kings. Quat. By want and the envy and hatred which it engenders we shall move the mobs and with their hands we shall wipe out all those who hinder us. When the hour strikes for our sovereign lord of all the world to be crowned it is these same hands which will sweep away everything that might be a hindrance thereto. Quat. This hatred will be still further magnified by the effects of an economic crisis, which will stop dealings on the exchanges and bring industry to a standstill. We shall create by all the secret subterranean methods open to us and with the aid of gold, which is all in our hands, a universal economic crisis whereby we shall throw upon the streets whole mobs of workers simultaneously in all the countries of Europe. Quat. Remember the French Revolution to which it was we who gave the name of great, the secrets of its preparations are well known to us, for it was wholly the work of our hands. And quat. We shall create an intensified centralization of government in order to grip in our hands all the forces of the community. We shall regulate mechanically all the actions of the political life of our subjects by new laws. These laws will withdraw one by one all the indulgences and liberties which have been permitted, to wipe out any unenlightened who oppose us by deed or word. And quat. We have set one against another the personal and national reckonings of the Goyim religious and race hatred, which we have fostered into a huge growth in the course of the past 20 centuries. This is the reason why there is one state which would anywhere receive support if it were to raise its arm, for every one of them must bear in mind that any agreement against us would be unprofitable to itself. We are too strong there is no evading our power. The nations cannot come to even an inconsiderable private agreement without our secretly having a hand in it. And quad. Nowadays it is more important to disarm the peoples than to lead them into war. And quad. In order to put public opinion into our hands we must bring it into a state of bewilderment by giving expression from all sides to so many contradictory opinions and for such length of time as will suffice to make the Goyim lose their heads in the labyrinth and come to see that the best thing is to have no opinion of any kind in matters political, which it is not given to the public to understand, because they are understood only by him who guides the public. This is the final secret. And quad. By all these means we shall so wear down the Goyim that they will be compelled to offer us international power of a nature that by its position will enable us, without any violence, gradually to absorb all the state forces of the world and to form a super-government. 
its hands will reach out in all directions like nippers and its organization will be of such colossal dimensions that it cannot fail to subdue all the nations of the world. Unquote. We shall raise the rate of wages, which, however, will not bring any advantage to the workers, for at the same time, we shall produce a rise in prices. We shall further undermine artfully and deeply sources of production, by accustoming the workers to anarchy and to drunkenness. In order that the true meaning of things may not strike the unenlightened before the proper time we shall mask it under an alleged ardent desire to serve the working classes and the great principles of political economy about which our economic theories are carrying on an energetic propaganda. Unquote. The intensification of armaments, the increase of police forces are all essential for the completion of the aforementioned plans. What we have to get at is that there should be in all the states of the world, besides ourselves, only the masses of the proletariat, a few millionaires devoted to our interests, police and soldiers. Unquote. In a word, to sum up our system of keeping the governments of the Goyim in Europe in check, we shall show our strength to one of them by terrorist attempts and to all, if we allow the possibility of general rising against us, we shall respond with the guns of America or China or Japan. Unquote. Our directorate must surround itself with all these forces of civilization among which it will have to work. It will surround itself with publicists, practical jurists, administrators, diplomats and, finally, with persons prepared by a special super-educational training in our special schools. Unquote. We have in our service persons of all opinions, of all doctrines, restoring monarchists, demagogues, socialists, communists, and utopian dreamers of every kind. We have harnessed them all to one task, each one of them on his own account is boring away at the last remnants of authority, is striving to overthrow all established forms of order. Unquote. We have fooled, bemused and corrupted the youth of the Goyim by rearing them in principles and theories which are known to us to be false although it is by us that they have been inculcated. Unquote. Above the existing laws without altering them and by merely twisting them into contradictions of interpretations, we have erected something grandiose in the way of results. These results found expression first in the fact that the interpretations mask the laws, afterwards they entirely hid them from the eyes of the government owing to the impossibility of making anything out of the tangled web of legislation. Unquote. The Chamber of Deputies will provide cover for, will protect, will elect presidents, but we shall take from it the right to propose new, or make changes in existing laws, for this right will be given by us to the responsible president, a puppet in our hands. We shall invest the president with the right of declaring a state of war. Unquote. Not a single announcement will reach the public without our control. Even now this is already attained by us inasmuch as all news items are received by a few agencies, in whose offices they are focused from all parts of the world. These agencies will then be already entirely ours and will give publicity only to what we dictate to them. Unquote. Our wise men, trained to become leaders of the Goyim, will compose speeches, projects, memoirs, articles, which will be used by us to influence the minds of the Goyim, directing them towards such understanding and forms of knowledge as have been determined by us. Unquote. Economic crises have been produced by us for the Goyim by no other means than the withdrawal of money from circulation. You are aware that the gold standard has been the ruin of the states which adopted it, for it has not been able to satisfy the demands for money, the more so that we have removed gold from circulation as far as possible. Unquote. Thanks to such methods, paying interest on loans, allowed by the carelessness of the Goy states, their treasuries are empty. The period of loans supervenes, and that has swallowed up remainders and brought all the Goy states to bankruptcy. Unquote. Any form of taxation per head, the state is bailing out the last coppers of the poor taxpayers in order to settle accounts with wealthy foreigners, from whom it borrowed money from the pockets of the poor to those of the rich. Unquote. We have got our hands into the administration of the law, into the conduct of elections, into the press, into the liberty of the person, but principally into education and training as being the cornerstones of a free existence. Unquote. It is indispensable for us to undermine all faith, to tear of minds out of the unenlightened the very principle of Godhead and the Spirit, and to put in its place arithmetical calculations and material needs. Unquote. When we come into our kingdom it will be undesirable for us that there should exist any other religion but ours of the one God with whom our destiny is bound up by our position as the chosen people and through whom our same destiny is united with the destinies of the world. We must therefore sweep away all other forms of belief. Unquote. After reading these words, you may also have a feeling of uneasiness. Seemingly, the protocols do elaborate on the Illuminati program for world takeover that would not have pertained to the world at the time the protocols were alleged to have been written. Because of the depth of information given on the various aspects of the plan, I believe that they were written by, or based on the writings of someone who had an intimate knowledge of the future plans and inner workings of the international bankers. From that standpoint, I consider the information to be authentic. However, because the document identifies the Jews as being responsible for carrying out this insidious plot, I consider the protocols as a whole, to be a fraudulent rendering of an earlier document, which has since been lost. A few years ago, another theory came to light in regard to the protocols. 
If the document was forged with the intent of being an indictment against all Jews, it would not just pinpoint a small group of individuals. It speaks of a king of the blood of Sion who will preside over a Masonic kingdom and that this king will be of the dynastic roots of King David. It claims that the king of the Jews will be the real pope and the patriarch of an international church. Eliphas Levi, Alphonse Louis Constant, who had joined a Martinist affiliated Masonic lodge, which later merged with the Memphis and Mizraim lodges, had assisted Charles Nadier, Grand Master of the Prior de Sion 1801-1844, to sift through the Vatican documents taken by Napoleon. Before he died in 1875, he said that in 1879 a new political and religious universal kingdom would be established, and that it would be possessed by him who would have the keys of the East apostrophe. This unusual comment has led researchers to believe that he had access to the original protocol document which was kept at the Mizraim Lodge. Protocol number 3 states, when the hour strikes for our sovereign lord of all the world to be crowned it is these hands which will sweep away everything that might be a hindrance thereto. Ours they will not touch, because the moment of the attack will be known to us and we shall take measures to protect our own. Ever since that time we have been leading the peoples from one disenchantment to another, so that in the end they should turn also from us in favor of that king despot of the blood of Sion, whom we are preparing for the world. Protocol number 15 states, when the king of Israel sets upon his sacred head the crown offered to him by Europe he will become the patriarch of the world. Number 17 says, the king of the Jews will be the real pope of the universe, the patriarch of an international church. And number 24 reads, I pass now to the method of confirming the dynastic roots of King David to the last strata of the earth. The prop of humanity in the person of the supreme lord of all the world of the holy seed of David must sacrifice to his people all personal inclinations. It concludes by saying that certain members of the seed of David will prepare the kings and their heirs, zero only the king and the three who stood sponsor for him will know what is coming. It is signed by the representatives of Sion, of the 33rd degree. These strange references have been linked to a little known organization known as the Prior de Sion, which will be discussed in a later chapter. It is possible that the original text of the protocols was based on a document taken from this organization, which was altered by Sergei Nilas, to make the entire Jewish race look bad.